So last month I said yes to every product offer for like a week and I just unboxed everything on camera and I was surprised by a couple things. One, how fun it was to shoot and two, how many hidden gems we actually found. Obviously there were some really garbage products in there but by the end of the video I was surprised at how many products I was able to recommend. Also, you guys seem to really like that video and I got a lot of requests for making this a recurring series. So here we are back again with a few new products from random companies that I said yes to and we're just gonna go through them one by one, see what's good, see what sucks. And uh, of course, I've, I've brought back the Charizard onesie because it's just a tradition at this point for this series. Plus, it makes me feel like I can breathe fire. Before we continue, special thanks to Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office for sponsoring this video. Formerly known as Acronis True Image, Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office is the ultimate cyber protection solution, offering secure backups and anti-malware. So instead of having to pay for two standalone services, their two-in-one solution will save you a ton of money over time, while reducing the complexity of having to manage two or more solutions. Choose the protection plan that best suits your needs, with the highest plan supporting up to five computers and offering up to five terabytes of cloud storage. Back up literally anything and everything, files, programs, settings, and even your full system. Whether your PC dies, gets stolen, or blows up because you let me borrow it, you can restore all backed up information to new hardware at any time. Since your computer and precious files should be protected at all costs, you can rest assured that any backups you create are safe from cyber threats, viruses, and data corruption. Knowing that your devices and backups are secure offers a peace of mind that you can't really put a price on. If you're ready to give your PC the protection it deserves, just click on the link in the description below. First product of the day. I decided to unbox the smallest one first. It looked cute and it's a mouse. It's an ergonomic sculpted design EM01. It's got a ball on the side. Okay, so it is wireless. It's got that wireless dongle right there. This is the mouse. Wow, this is actually big. Ooh, the, the, the trackball's sparkly. It's all glittery and stuff. I like that. It looks like this mouse is just meant to be stationary. You do not actually move this mouse. You, you do all your tracking with the thumb. Ooh, it's got USB-C for charging. That's, that's nice. It's actually pretty comfortable. And the trackball is very fun to spin. I'm just gonna do this for a while. All right, it's tracking. The ball's tracking. Woo, it's slippery. Not, not the actual trackball, but, uh, but the cursor. It's high DPI. How do I turn the DPI? Is it this, this one? That didn't do anything. I don't think my, cur my cursor's not moving now. Oh, it's profile selecting. But it's not Bluetooth, is it? It is Bluetooth. Okay, so yeah, this, this button right here, it, it switches your uh, devices. You can connect it to three different devices. So two of those devices would be Bluetooth, and then one of them would actually be using the, uh, the USB dongle, the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Okay, this is the DPI button right here on the back. Ooh, light switch button, what does that do? Oh, that's the only LED on the mouse, but that still looks really cool. Wait, what is this? Adjustable mouse grip angle. Wait, can this? Oh, look at that. Look, you can change the angle of the mouse. It's got like this adjustable platform that it's on. So if you kind of want a more ergonomic grip on it, you kind of prefer that going to the side a little bit. It stays planted too. You would think that for being on an adjustable platform that it would be a little wobbly, but it's very firm. This grip is good. This is good grip. I think I like it in the side position more. All right, let's browse around here. The trackball is very smooth. I feel like this product speaks to my inner laziness. You know, I don't gotta move my wrist, move my arm, wrist fatigue, just maybe, maybe some thumb fatigue. I feel like it's a little tricky if you're just trying to, let's say you're trying to, to highlight something really specific, like a, a period, then it's a little tricky if you're at a higher DPI. But again, I'm sure once you use this thing for a while, you get used to it. ProtoArc EM01. What is this thing going for? 60 bucks, that's not bad. I think that's a fair price for this mouse. It, it's very good quality. So these are the, the front and back buttons. The forward and back, if you're like browsing the web and stuff, they're actually up here. And the buttons that are taking their place where they'd usually be on a traditional mouse, uh, that's reserved for your, your lighting button as well as the DPI uh, adjustment. Scroll wheel is fantastic. I really like the scroll wheel. Big win for this mouse. I like it, I'd, I'd recommend it. I probably wouldn't play CSGO with it, but for anyone who's just looking for uh, a trackball mouse, you know, with uh, an ergonomic design, maybe you're just doing some daily tasking, computing, web browsing, whatever, I like this thing a lot more than I thought I would. Next up, in no particular order here, this one already came kind of ripped. I didn't see what was inside of it though. This is a Vantru, Vantru Element 2. Is this a dash cam? Automobile security and dash cam. Oh, look at it. It's cute. USB-C, good. Micro SD card slot, a reset button, power button. Pretty decent sized screen. Nice LCD there. 
And uh, ooh, some physical buttons on the bottom here for navigation. Manual to the rescue. Oh my God, look at this book. Oh, it's because all the languages. Damn. Still, even the English section is quite lengthy. It's a good bathroom reader. Okay, uh, give me a second to read through this. Maybe more than a second. Couple thousand seconds. All right, I just installed the dash cam in my car and uh, installation was actually really easy. I really like the uh, the USB-C connections. I didn't give a rat's ass about cable management though because this is just a demo. Uh, so I just kind of strung the cables straight across my car from the front to the back. Uh, this does include a rear camera. I forgot to mention that earlier. I didn't notice it uh, in the packaging, but there is a rear camera as well as a front camera. They're both 1440p, 30 frames per second. The image quality is actually really good on both, both cameras. Um, I don't know if they're using the exact same sensor, but same resolution and frame rate. Uh, you can see license plates pretty clearly from a reasonable distance away. It's not quite as clear as my Blackview that I use in my personal vehicle. Blackview is a very well-known and high-end dash cam, but that's also two to three times more expensive than this one. To that end, I think the value of this is actually really solid. For all the features that you're getting, 200 bucks is really not a whole lot to spend. I love that it has GPS, so you can get navigation coordinates and all that. It has onboard Wi-Fi, so you can connect it to an app, which lets you view live video feeds uh, in real time either from the front or the back cameras. Uh, you can even download any clips that you've recorded right away. So if you get into a car accident, you don't have to you know, capture the card with a, a laptop or a PC. You can actually just like show the officer the video footage right on your phone, which is super handy. It even has voice control, so you can tell it to do things like start recording, stop recording, toggle the Wi-Fi on and off, take a screenshot, or even meet the microphone. There's an included remote with an adhesive backing that you can stick to your dashboard or somewhere on your steering wheel, somewhere it's not gonna get in the way while driving, and that lets you do similar things to the voice commands, like muting and unmuting your microphone, taking a snapshot, or recording video. Again, I'm pretty impressed with the feature set given the price point. And based on the Amazon reviews, it seems like a lot of people are liking this thing. So if you're in the market for a budget dash cam, I would definitely consider checking it out. All right, we're two for two. two the first two products were actually good. I'm feeling good about this. This is, this is awesome. I'm pleasantly surprised so far, but I feel like, I feel like we're due for a lemon right now, right? But let's see what we're working with here. Oh my God, are you serious? A, a Steam Deck knockoff? Ioneo Air Pro. Ioneo, Ioneo, I have no idea how to pronounce this. So this is a Windows-based handheld. It's got an AMD Ryzen 7 5825U, and it's white with 16 gigs of DRAM and a terabyte of storage. I did do a review of the One X Player Mini semi-recently, a couple months ago. And I thought it was a really cool product, but for how much they were charging for it, I deemed that it was not a great value and that uh, you should probably just go with a Steam Deck if you were looking for a handheld gaming experience. This, I have no idea how much they're charging for this. This is much more compact than the One X Player Mini. I would say almost pocketable if you, have, if you tend to have larger pockets. Feels pretty good in the hand, actually. And the quality seems all right, too. Whoa, look at that. It's like a two-tone. It's got a two-tone gradient. It's like pink on the right side, and then it fades to like a teal. They're uh, aluminum. I think these are aluminum triggers. Good amount of throw to them and uh, nice resistance. A, B, X, Y feels good. Joysticks aren't bad, actually. You know what? The buttons are ergonomic so far. Pretty good. It's got a 1920 by 1080 display, OLED display, and the Ryzen 7 chip on here is eight cores. It has Radeon Vega 8 graphics, so it is using integrated graphics, of course. There's no way that you could get uh, a discrete GPU in here and still call this portable. The battery life would just be non-existent. All right, how much is this going for? It says $9.99 for our exact configuration, uh, which is a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the One X Player Mini, but still, Notably more pricey than the Steam Deck, even at the higher end configuration of like one terabyte, uh, or no, 512 gig, I think is what the Steam Deck goes up to. For storage, it's it's still much cheaper than than what this is, but let's, let's take it for a spin. All right, we're in the desktop, yeah. So cursor movement is with the left joystick, and then with the right joystick, you can use that to scroll. I actually have Witcher 3 already fired up. Actually, I wanna see what our frame rate is. Where's our FPS counter? All right, I guess this gives us an opportunity to demo some other stuff. So uh, right up here by the left button, there's a smaller button that if you press it, uh, it should theoretically, okay, there it goes. Pulls up your on-screen keyboard. I don't know why that wasn't working. Let's try it again. It's not 100% responsive. I don't know what's going on with that. That doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. We're gonna download Afterburner really quick. I was typing with my fingers earlier and it is possible. It's a lot easier on this than something like the Steam Deck or the One X Player Mini because those are much larger, but using the mouse cursor is still way more comfortable and ergonomic even though it's a bit slower. Oof, 
20 frames per second, going down to 17. Choppity chop. When we weren't even at 1920 by 1080, that was 1024 by 768. And it doesn't look all that great. Let's go to 1280 by 720 at least. All right, our frame rate has come up a little bit. Now we're in the mid 20s. Still not hitting that 30 FPS mark though. The One X Player Mini was definitely outperforming this. It was it was at least getting over 30 consistently. Obviously the integrated Radeon graphics on this are not nearly as powerful as something like the Steam Deck or even the One X Player. Okay, I just minimized Witcher 3 and my mouse cursor is not working. I don't even see it. Okay, there's definitely some like control issues here. Go away OneDrive, no one likes you. I closed Witcher 3, Why is my, where's my mouse cursor? It's still not showing up. Literally, no, it, I think it locked up. Literally nothing's working. <sighs> Forza. Forza. Oh God, Xbox, freaking Microsoft, I swear. Keyboard button, on-screen keyboard button's not working. Bro, dude, I'm not having good luck with this thing. Or maybe it's just, garbage. I've only been using this for about 20 minutes and there's already like half a dozen problems with it. I can't even, I gotta restart. I gotta reboot. Why? Why does the world hate me? All right, I rebooted and my cursor's working again. Yay, like it should have been all along. Piece of crap. Is the keyboard button working again? Thank God. You know there's something wrong with a product when you're already frustrated within the first hour of using it. What the f is this? What's going on here? What happened to the screen, bro? Okay, it's literally, this game has been loading for like three minutes. And I don't know what's going on with the screen. This thing is this thing is broken. This is a broken piece of tech. I would be pissed if I paid a thousand dollars for this. It's it's hardly working at all. I've already had to reboot it to get the cursor to start working again. Some of the buttons just aren't super responsive. At this price point, this should be a perfectly polished product, and it is not. At least the One X Player Mini was very polished, and I didn't really have any kind of technical issues like I am with this. This has the potential to be just as good as a Steam Deck or, or similar but it's just not, which sucks because I really like the form factor of this thing. I think it's perfectly portable. It's a lot smaller and easier to just put in a bag or carry with you, but there are so many little things holding it back. I just, I can't. All right, we went through all that hassle to get this game finally running. And for what? 22 measly FPS. We are at 1920 by 1080 at the very lowest possible preset. This game is looking bad. Somehow it's making Forza 5 look bad. It's the most impressive thing about this device so far. Okay, just, just entertain me for a second. What, what happens if we drop to 1280 by 720? Does anyone care? Does anyone give a shit? All right, that helped us get all the way up to 28 FPS. Woo! -hoo! Like, whoa, what the hell, you see that? Oh shit. low streaming bandwidth. Streaming delays, this might be caused by limited disk bandwidth or limited CPU resources. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, no, don't buy it. Don't buy it, I hate it, I hate it. So this next product I accidentally took out of its shipping packaging without realizing that it was a product for this video. So I kind of spoiled the surprise. It is a smart Wi-Fi essential oil diffuser. I've secretly always wanted one of these just because I think they're cool. They're, they're sort of relaxing and, and they smell nice, assuming that you put a good smelling oil in there. All right, so inside the package we have, looks to be a charger and the diffuser itself. Uh, so it's got a top like that. I've never actually used one of these either. I can't believe I need a manual for this. Do not operate this product with wet hand. What about wet foot? This is from Miros, by the way. Mi Miros? I don't know how to pronounce any of these company names. Wada, I need, wow, wow, Let's use my handy dandy liquid loop filler. And then we're gonna add two to three drops of oil. One, two, three. Reattach all this on top. What does this button do? Ooh, it's a light. There's an ambient light that goes around. There's a nice little strip there. Oh, and it's cycling. It's RGB, RGB diffuser. It's not the brightest LED. It's, it's fairly faint. This is a mist button. Oh, oh, it's coming out. It smells like mint. Shocker. And I like the uh, little water trickling noises these things make. It's very relaxing. All right, how do we connect this thing to Wi-Fi? Download the app, of course. So what kind of stuff can you do once it's paired? Or you can link it to Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. It seems like the only things you can really do with either of those voice assistants is either turn the device on and off or turn the ambient light on and off. Installation failed. Come on, it didn't pair successfully. All right, third time trying to connect. I follow the instructions to a T. I, I promise I'm, I'm smart enough to figure out a diffuser. Installation failed. $40, 40 USD, 
four and a half star rating, 4.4 4 out of five. That's actually really good. So maybe there's something going on here with my particular unit or my Wi-Fi network, which I don't know what the heck. One star review, would not connect to the app, nor would even pair to Wi-Fi. That's, that's my situation. All right, I'm not alone. So according to someone who has connected it successfully to the app, it's perfectly simple. You can change the colors, toggle on off the color rotation feature, dim or brighten the light, or toggle the mist between light and heavy settings. This time, let me try connecting to my other router. Installation failed. All right, screw you. You smell good and that's it. You go in the corner there. Think about what you've done. This is the second largest package that I received for this video. It is slightly heavy. Very curious what it could be. <laughs> Wooey pet, automatic pet feeder. I actually already use an automatic pet feeder for my cats and I absolutely love it. It's very convenient. Uh, my, my cats hate it because it, it regulates how much food they can eat every day and, and they're a bunch of fatties. But this looks a little bit more high tech than the one I have, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's better. 17 cups of food is how much it fits. <laughs> it didn't come with a cable though. Is it in here? It's in here. Inside the feeder. Ah, oh, well let's test this out with the kitties. Get the old kitty review. Feed, 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 connect the ball. Put the top on. There you go. I don't like how the bowl is very easy to slip on and off. It doesn't actually interlock with the top portion pops off very easily, which would be annoying if you're trying to move the, the, uh, the unit as a whole. 17 cups sounds like a lot as well, but if you have multiple pets, like I have two cats, uh, they'll go through this in like less than a week, probably. Maybe, maybe about a week. But the tank for my automated feeder is almost twice as large as this, which is much more convenient, just uh, FYI. If you have a single pet or if they don't eat a lot, then you're probably fine, but it's just worth noting. To the kitties. All right, I got the pet feeder all set up here at my house and it's pretty easy to configure. It does not use an app. It's not app enabled. That's a pro in the sense where it's very simple. So you can configure everything straight here from the LCD, how many portions you want, what time of day, how many meals per day. But the downside of it not being app enabled is that you can't really keep tabs on whether or not your pet's been fed uh, remotely like you can with, with this feeder. This is the one I've been using for a while. It's the PetSafe automated feeder. Uh, it works great. Since I travel occasionally, it is nice having the, the app so I can monitor their meals and even feed them manually from afar if I need to. That being said, this is half the price of, of this one. This is like 130, 130 bucks is like about 70. This is one. Oh, okay. As you can see, I, I did program it to uh, my voice um, and it actually does play it back every time it's feeding time. You can see that it did spit out the food just fine. My cats are cautiously approaching it because it's a new feeder. And also probably because that sound bite isn't the most inviting. <laughs> I think they're scaring each other. But that was actually my first time testing it out and uh, it worked, it worked just fine. What do you think, girl? The girl seems, the girl seems taken aback by it. <laughs> she does not, she doesn't like the feeder for some reason. Boy, you are, you are free to approach the food. Here you go, boy. But yeah, the feeder works as intended. It's really easy to use and I think it's a fair price for what it is. All right, this is the only other product today that I accidentally opened prematurely before the video, because I didn't know, again, it was for this series. So I already know it's a keyboard. I, could, I saw through the packaging and I quickly averted my eyes. That's all I know is that it's a, a keyboard of some sort. Halo 65 with damper kit. Yep, this, this looks mechanical. Shine through keycaps for Halo series. Newfie Studio is the brand. Two-tone wrist rest. Ooh, I like that wrist rest. It's transparent. Ooh, that's a really cool wrist rest. Oh man. Oh, it's kind of frosted. It's kind of got a satin finish. That's the word I'm looking for. That is clean. I think that might be the nicest wrist rest I've ever seen. That, seriously, and it's got some really nice weight to it. That is beautiful. I hope this isn't the coolest thing about this package though. I hope the keyboard is actually pretty good. I've never heard of Halo 65. I'm sure a lot of you mechanical keyboard fanatics have. All right, I like the stock keycaps. Kind of funky, kind of funky, but not too funky. Just the right amount of funk. Oh, and it comes with all these too. So it comes with some alternate keycaps, keycap removal tool, USB-C cable, and some additional switches, some different colored switches. I believe these are Gatoron. These are Gatoron switches, uh, but it's just one of each. I wonder if this is just so you can test out different switches to your liking. So maybe uh, it will help the purchasing decision in the future. And this is a more or less black keycap set, but uh, I'll just set this aside for now. We'll just take a look at the keyboard itself. Configured as is. Nice uh, color tones at the bottom as well. Beautiful logo. Pop these out. Give me that sweet wrist rest. Connect just goes like that. Oh, I'll get my uh, I'll get my mic a little closer for a sound test. Yep, 
Yeah, yeah, enter. Space bar. The space bar is very thocky. It's a little bit louder than, than I'd like it to be. I feel like I, I like the sound of my GMMK Pro space bar better. But it ain't bad. A little, a little low and echoey. The rest of the keys sound fire. They feel really good too. I wanna see what, what color switches are actually, we're, we're using right now. Do, 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 do. Browns, Gatoron Browns. Yay, I like Browns. Yep, they got that tactile bump. They're bumping. What a dope little keyboard. 65% of course, as the name suggests, Halo 65. I would say this is high end. This definitely feels high end. Kind of on the same level as a GMMK Pro or something like that. What is this going for? 120. 120, that's not bad. Dude, 120 bucks, I was expecting like, honestly like 180 to 200. This is like a really solid board. It types well, it sounds good. Like any keyboard, I think there's room for improvement here, particularly with the stabilizers. It could use some, some new stabs. It's just a little bit of wobble on the uh, enter, shift, and space bar. It's not bad at all, but it could be a little better. I'm just nitpicking right now because this thing's already pretty, pretty solid for the price. Oh, okay, let's see. Oh, we got a USB-C on the back right side here. Oh, we got a switch selector here if you wanna go wired or wireless. Oh, yeah, what is this? Is this, a oh, the Wi-Fi dongle, that's so smart. Did you see that? Did you see that? It just, it goes like that. That is so cool. I love it. It's easy to take in and out. Genius, RGB, RGB backlighting, boy. The LEDs are nice and bright. I like it. What the hell? Comes with stickers of anime girls? What the hell's this? It just got weird. Oh, you can even change the side light. So there's uh, LED strips on either side, as well as the back. And that can be changed independently of the rest of the keyboard lighting. What, what, the, what the frick is going on? What the hell's going on here? What the hell is this? Really? Come on. Cool little keyboard. I like it. Actually like it. Don't like the stickers that much or the poster, but the keyboard's cool. Well, we started this video with the smallest product of the bunch, so it only seems fitting that we end with the largest one. This is the Drybo Automatic Cabin Pet Dryer. From my understanding, it is a way to dry your pet quickly and conveniently after they've had a bath or gotten wet from outside or whatever. I, uh, I'm not gonna be testing this on my cats because if I try to get them wet, I will no longer have a face. Let's just take a look at the product itself really quick. Ah! Ah! Come here, dry boat. Yeah. I didn't even know something like this existed. This looks like a torture chamber for animals. This is from Home Run Pet. Something tells me your pet is not gonna be running home after you use this on them. And how do we get two pet related tech items in this one video? All right, I'm just gonna wing it really quick just to see if we can get it at least turned on. Cause I mean, there's no animal in here. So there's no, there's no real inherent risk, right? Plug in. Okay, power switch on. How's this open? Okay. Oh, there's a, a pillow. Is this a pillow? Nice little comfy mat for them to, to sit on or shit on once they realize they're trapped in a vacuum. Press mode to select the preset modes. All right, so you've got a couple different modes here. You've got heat, cool, cozy dry, quick dry. And then you can change different parameters of each mode. For heat, you could crank it up to uh, incinerate your pet at 90 degrees. This is the fan speed. Oh, there's a nice light. Sweet. And go. It's drying. It's drying cozily. The cabin's actually not too big, so this is really for small animals, it seems. Uh, maybe a chihuahua or uh, maybe a chinchilla, a uh, ferret, baby crocodile, typical household pets. Okay, well, it seems like it works well enough. Uh, again, you should really read the manual so you don't turn your dog into filet mignon. But uh, outside of that, it's, it seems nice. It's good quality and stuff. You know, originally I was gonna use my friend's dog in here, but then we did the measurements over the phone just now. Dog's not gonna fit. I mean, its face would literally be up against the glass. So I, I'm thinking maybe I could actually stick one of my cats in here. Um, I wouldn't get them wet because there's, there's no way. I would survive, but I could put the nicer of my two cats in here just long enough to give us a quick demo. And you know, if the cat starts going berserk or catches fire, then I'll let him out immediately. I don't really see that happening though. This is after all, just a, a harmless pet fryer. Dryer. 
All right, I have the dry bow set up and it's currently in heating mode. And uh, I got the fan on the lowest level, so it's not super loud. The cats don't really like really loud fan noises. They absolutely hate my vacuum. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that it actually has these two openings. There's an opening on either side that you can stick your hand in if you want to pet your animal uh, while they're being dried or cooled or whatever. You can also remove those panels uh, completely if you want to open it up as a, sort of a, a pet bed so that your pet can go in and out as they please and uh, there is a nice little soft cushion at the bottom there so they're comfortable. So I know that cats actually do like warmer temperatures. I looked it up on Google. It's like anywhere between 86 and 92 degrees or something like that, Fahrenheit. So technically, they might actually like this thing more than I thought. It's at uh, 103 degrees right now, but when I stick my hand in here, and it's definitely warm, but it's not, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like 103. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave the door open and kind of take a step back and see if they go in there on their own, because that would be, be much preferred than me trying to force them in there. <laughs> I got her in there. She looks confused, as expected, but uh, it is warmer in there, probably around 85, 90 degrees, and she should notice it because it's pretty cold in the house, so she should be comfortable in there. She's probably just like, what? what is this place? She doesn't look too freaked out, actually. She's like, this is weird, but it's also warm, and I love it, and this cushion is very soft. <laughs> She's totally cool with it. She's totally vibing. Uh, your brother's gonna be jealous. You jealous, boy? Nah, you don't care. <laughs> uh, all right, now how do I set it to cook mode? Just kidding. Let's test out the petting hole. Oh, it's me, girl. It's just me. She hissed at my hand at first. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna try that again. That was a bold move already. All right, I think we can call this product a smash success. One out of two cats approve. That's all right in my book. Oh, baby. So cozy. Yeah, she's gonna be in there all day. Then that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Let me know what your favorite product was and your least favorite product was down in the comments below. I feel like there were a lot of good products today, but also some really weird ones. So as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Toss a like before you go. If you enjoyed it, get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I will see y'all in the next video.